You know, there's that old saying that says, if all else fails, read the instructions. Well, I want to encourage you to read the instructions before anything fails. And there's nothing more important than the owner's manual that comes with your Mercedes Benz. And yet I find very few people really read them. This one here is very typical of a lot of those early owner's handbooks that you saw in the you know, 60s, 70s, right up through the 80s. I mean, it wasn't much of a handbook, was it? This is for a 1978 450 SEL 6.9. Now that was, you know, a pretty sophisticated car, but the owner's handbook is only a quarter of an inch thick. And even moving up here uh, into the 90s, this is a 1990, a 190E owner's handbook. Pack it, but when you pull the actual handbook out, once again, you know, it's about a quarter of an inch thick. So, you know, things were moving ahead. We get up into the early to mid 90s, particularly like with the 140 chassis. You know, the, hand, the handbook covers and the leather cases got a lot fancier, and there were lots of different little booklets in there. But when you pulled out the actual owner's manual, well, it was starting to get a little bit thicker. You know, that's maybe 5 sixteenths to 3 eighths of an inch. And it doesn't take a lot to read those. I mean, even, even only one this big is not that difficult. But once again, I find very few people read these. So let's, let's enter the 2000s. Oh, boy. You know, we're looking at a heavily optioned W211 E500 here. And let's take a look at the handbooks. Look at that. Once again, a very nice case. But, and there's, a, there's you know, four or five different little booklets in here, but look, look at the size of the owner's handbook. Can you believe that? Now, okay, there's a lot of gizmos on this car, I have to admit. A lot of really neat, cool features. But I would really like to know Percentage-wise, how many owners of these cars actually read these entire owner's handbooks? Now, just the other day, I was in a restaurant. I had this car parked out front. And guy came and says, is this your car? He says, yeah, I got an E350. I love it. And he, he went on and I said, we were laughing about the number of options and, and gadgets on these cars. And he, I said, have, have you ever read your, your owner's handbook? Because I had my handbook there. And he laughed. He says, no, I've never read it. And he says... But you know some I think I should have. The other day I was pushing buttons on the dash and something happened and whoa, I, he said, I didn't even know the car had this feature. So let me show you what happened. There really is a reason that you should read your owner's handbook, both from a safety aspect, from an efficiency aspect, and who knows, you may even find some real surprises in these books. Well, here's the console of the W211. And as you can see, uh, there are a lot of buttons here. Uh, in fact, I, I could probably count them, but it would take a while. And this owner was telling me, you know, he just happened to bump into something and something happened and his whole uh, dash area here started moving. It kind of freaked him out. But there's this little chrome, little chrome piece right under the hazard triangle. It's like, it almost looks like a little piece of trim. And who would know that's a button <laughs> And who would know that it would do this? Watch this. Uh-oh, what's that? Can you imagine? He didn't know what this was? Oh, look at that. It's a six-disc CD changer. And this owner did not even know. He had owned the car about six months and did not even know his car had this. So if that doesn't prove the reason why you should read the owner's handbook, I don't know what will.